In this video, we're going to go over the definition of a gradient field. So once again, here's a definition. Capital F is a gradient field. Gradient field. If there exists, there exists a function. Nope, function is spelled with a C, not a D. If there exists a function, which we'll call f, with the gradient of f being equal to your vector field. Now, if you can find this function f, then f is referred to as the generating, generating, or potential function. of capital F, the generating function or potential function of F. Now, generally speaking, what that means is that you will be able to, in two dimensions, take a couple of partial derivatives, like so. So partial derivative of F with respect to X of XY for the I component, and partial derivative of F with respect to Y for the J component. Now, in three dimensions, this was the two-dimensional case. Here's the three-dimensional case. Capital F would be equal to the partial derivative of F with respect to X, partial derivative of F with respect to Y, and partial derivative of F with respect to Z. So all three of your component functions are all functions of X, Y, and Z. And they are all partial derivatives of your generating function. Now there is a test to figure out if your, um, if your given vector field is actually a gradient field. So if capital F is a gradient field, we call it a conservative vector field. And that's conservative based on, you know, conservation of things. And we'll talk about those later on in the chapter. Now, typically, if you're given a two-dimensional vector field, it would look like we've been using P and Q for this. Now, in order to question whether or not that is actually a gradient field, it would have to be equal to these two things. Now, the test for where this comes from, it actually comes from Clairaut's theorem. Clairaut's theorem stated that the mixed partial derivatives of a continuous function would be equal to each other, that the partial derivative of f with respect to x then y would match the partial derivative of f with respect to y then x. Now, interpreting these in a particular order, this is saying take the derivative with respect to y of the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and take the partial derivative with respect to x of the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Now, in the event that this is actually conservative, this partial derivative of f with respect to x would be your first component. So this is how to check to see if your vector field is conservative. The partial derivative of f with respect to y, that would be q. So if you take these two partial derivatives of your component functions, and they happen to be equal to each other, then your vector field is conservative. Now it's going to be a little bit more intensive if you're dealing with a function of three variables. Now if you're dealing with a function of three variables or a three-dimensional vector field, then we would have P and Q and R. And if you're questioning whether or not this vector field is conservative, then you'd be checking for these three things. Now Clairaut's theorem for functions of three variables will state the following, Clairaut's theorem Mixed partial of f with respect to x then y will match the mixed partial of f with respect to y then x. Also, mixed partial with respect to x then z will match mixed partial with respect to z then x. Also, mixed partial with respect to y then z will match the mixed partial of f with respect to z then y. Oh boy. Now this means that there are actually six partial derivatives for you to take and three pairs of them to see if they're equal to each other. 
So this statement would be saying take the partial derivative with respect to y of the partial of f with respect to x. That's p. This is saying take the partial derivative with respect to x of the partial derivative of f with respect to y. That's q. You'll notice that this one is the same as what we saw at the end of the previous page. These next two will be a little bit different though, because they're going to involve the z variable. This one says take the partial with respect to x, then z. So this would be partial of p with respect to z. We'll match the partial derivative of f with respect to z, then x. With respect to z would be r. And then finally, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, then z. So partial with respect to y is q. We differentiate that with respect to z. And we compare that to the partial derivative of r with respect to y. In order to show that your vector field in three dimensions is conservative, you would need to show that all of these things are true. Now, once you test to see whether or not it's conservative, there's also the question of how do I find the generating function? And we will talk more on that in section 6.3.